Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're talking everything Cardano. We're actually taking a look at Cardano on a bigger macro scale. Taking a look at what happened in 2021 through to what is happening currently in 2022 and then the output potential for the next bull run. As I get into this video if you find it useful and informative smash the like button I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel tap the bell and stay up to date with all of the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Now above and beyond that you're going to want to join the Discord server. It's completely free, linked in the description below. It is a centralized hub of everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. We link in pretty much most of the news feeds across the, the kind of um, crypto media, Twitter feeds, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, you name it, it's all there. That is the first place we go to to update our community on what is happening in the crypto space. So check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Okay. Let's talk Cardano ADA. Here we have ADA paired up with USDT. We're on the daily chart and Binance is our data source. Now we can review where things were in 2021 and actually starts way back here in March of 2020. This is pretty much where we had the COVID crash, right? And we can see this very, very nice rapid move to the upside and then cooling off pretty much from the August, uh, late, late July, early August, we start to see this kind of cool off period. We come down uh, into these lows of September and then we start to slowly work our way back up through November. Uh, into December, January, February, and all the way up to uh, pretty much August of 2021. Okay, so we can see that it's very impulsive trend that was being set here. And again, this low point from March 2020 was pretty much the low point for most cryptocurrencies. Not all, okay, some actually bottomed at the end of uh, 2018. And in uh, January of 2019, they had this nice run. But not all altcoins follow the same path as Bitcoin or Chainlink or Ethereum, for example. And in here, what we actually saw was the March crash, the COVID crash, uh, the pandemic crash, however you want to articulate that as the low point. Okay, this is the catalyst. This is the beginning of the bull run. Okay. Uh, and obviously, we're going down into new lower lows. So you can argue that all of this is bearish for Cardano. Okay. Now, those were fantastic prices. Okay, you could have got Cardano at, in March of 2020, down here at 1.77 cent. It was fantastic. Even I did not get in that early on Cardano, unfortunately. I kind of wish I did. I actually kind of got in, I think it was somewhere around here. Let me find it. It was about 8 cent. So let's see where that would have been. I know it was around the end of, yeah, it's going to probably be this dip here, actually, uh, about 8.79 cents, somewhere in there, okay? And um, so we, we, we did really, really well with it, okay? And one of the things I want to kind of stress about this is that where Cardano was all the way down here in this previous bear market, the technology is, is so much more superior now than it was back then, right? So there was a lot of wild speculation about Cardano back here, um, yet where it is right now, compared to where it was, technology standpoint is, is miles ahead and the price is very attractive at the same time. Okay, so if we go ahead and actually check a couple of things here, uh, we find the price range. If I go and take this low point down here uh, to the high point up here, okay, we did 17,469% in gains during that bull run, okay? Now, we can compare that to things like Bitcoin that did 2,000% or Ethereum that did 5,000%. Um, and you could also say, well, take a look at Polygon's Matic. It did 43,000%, I think it was, okay? Okay, so understand that there's going to be different um, levels of percentage gains in these bull runs. Um, but what I want to talk about in this particular video is um, the structure that's appeared here. Okay, so we've gone up in five waves. And this particular fifth wave is actually a really unusual one. It took me a very long time to figure out exactly what this was. Um, it is a fifth wave. We have gone up in five waves here, um, but it's not the standard one that you'd expect to see. Okay, and um, so with that being said, we've kind of finished up here. I thought we were going to be pushing up higher. We didn't. I thought we were looking for corrections. We then came down lower than this fourth wave low point and um, kind of confirming that we were either going to be doing some kind of expanding flat. So I was looking for five coming down. Uh, and again, that just simply wasn't going to be the case. Um, so for the most part, we've actually got this really quite complicated kind of corrective structure. Now, all of this here is corrective. OK, so we're not trending down. We haven't got the same kind of impulsive structure that we had to the upside on the downside here in 2022. Instead, it's all a lot of overlapping structures. It's all very correct 
corrective in the way that it's going. Okay, so let's go and focus in on this just a moment here, okay, because this move to the downside is quite important. It's quite key. We can see that there is some nice low points just down here in February, and we pushed that up to the high point in March. This is also very similar. Bitcoin was about $32,000 here. It went up to about $48,000 here. Um, and in the case of Cardano, we had lows down here about $0.74, cent, and we pushed up to the highs of approximately $1.24, approximately just up there, right? And um, so we can see this is a good point where we can see lots of kind of movements in price, but this was a key point for Bitcoin and also a key point here for Cardano. Um, so when we actually start to reflect on what's going on here, it does look very corrective in the way that it's moving. And this here is clearly a B wave movement as well. So I've been looking at this uh, as a structure that kind of plays out like so, uh, taking us down actually quite a bit further yet. I don't think we're necessarily there. I think it was 2223, yeah, 2.23 uh, approximately just down here, right? So that's the kind of structure that we're looking at. So we're not trending down, but it is actually a three wave corrective move after five waves. Now, now before we kind of go clicking off saying, oh yeah, it's all just wave counts, etc. One of the things that we have to kind of consider here is that when you have five waves on this side and you have three waves going down, the expectation on the move up is going to be five waves, which means I'm expecting a replica uh, to have this basically replicated. I'm looking for this entire five wave structure to appear up here, and that's the next bull run. Okay, so that puts Cardano on the map for some pretty significant gains, um, specifically under this structure, right? We come down. We then go up in five, down in three. We've got to go up in five. Okay, now there isn't a huge amount of data here on Binance. It is possible that maybe this is a corrective uh, or a regular flat correction or running flat correction or just a regular flat correction, right? It could be a number of different things. But with the data that I'm seeing, it looks like we've gone five up, three down. We should be going five up, right? Uh, and this is at scale. So just bear that in mind that this is going to potentially be pretty lucrative for investors in Cardano at the right pricing. So when we have this coming down, I can see that we also have this kind of sideways trading area just in here. This is a gain from May. We have the lows in July, for example. All of this area here is all overlapping. It's all corrective. And it's not really giving me confidence to think that we'll go into the moon. So obviously we break down. And we've been talking about these things for a while. But if I were to go ahead and try to measure this out, we take this low point down here up to this high point here. If I can grab it. There we go. We move this up to the bounce, which would be right about there. We can see that we can come down to 2.23. Uh, actually, it's 22.3 uh, uh, on this one. So it, I know it's 2.3 uh, when I did it more accurately. So uh, you can see that we come down to this area here. Okay. Um, so essentially, that looks pretty good. And it means that there's a subwave count going on here. One, two, three, taking us down. So we're going to get in confirmation that uh, there's a nice area just to be had down here. Now, if I go ahead and just grab this wick, you can see this is at 22.8. Uh, and then there's a little area just a little bit lower than that. If I grab hold of that one right there, comes in at 19.7. In between those two numbers, essentially there is a gap. That gap there, I think, is a gap that we are going to visit and we're going to take advantage of. Okay, so I take a look at these things and I think to myself that, yeah, there's a good strong chance that this is going to be the low point for Cardano and is going to be the best place to maybe think about dollar cost averaging. There's a few other areas down here, a little bit lower, maybe 17 cent and all those. Um, but really at that point, it doesn't generally matter terribly too much, uh, but as long as you're kind of dollar cost averaging into these ranges. So if we do come down into this area that I'm expecting, then what does that mean for Cardano going forward? Well, if I take the peak here, if I can find it, I think it is. I'm going to actually zoom in. I want to make sure I get this as right as I can for you guys. So let's go and zoom in. Let's grab hold of this particular wick right there. Just pull our fib down, make this a little bit smaller, and we'll just drag this all the way down to March of 2020. OK, now the reason for this, let me just scale this back out is that this is basically measuring from zero to one. OK, so the distance of all five waves is 100 percent, right? So that this Fibonacci retracement tool represents 100 percent of these five waves. Now, if I go ahead and move this over to our expected low, and I'm going to put it on the lowest possible area. OK, because that gives us um, a more conservative target to be thinking about. When you have five waves up and three waves down, you expect five waves up and you expect them to be the same 100% distance um, from here. So if that is 100%, we come down, we go up 100% to the same level. Basically, the A wave and the C wave should be a one-to-one -one ratio, typically. It's not a guarantee. 
It's just typically what you tend to find. And so in, in the case of Cardano's ADA, this would essentially mean potentially 34 point nine cent uh, so basically thirty four dollars ninety uh, now that seems absolutely insane and i know i know you guys are going to be in the keyboard warriors they're going to be in the comments section they're going to be saying do you know what the market cap will be yes yes i do um, and you have to understand that market cap isn't a barrier to price discovery the price dictates the market cap so whatever the price goes to the market cap only represents that okay so don't you need to kind of flip that on its head right that narrative of market cap stopping you from going somewhere the market cap is a simple calculation of supply multiplied by price it does not show you the money going into a project so in order to get to this number and i'm, I mean, I'm being yeah i'm being kind of you know optimistic i guess because I don't, I don't think we're going to go all that way um but in order to get there you need two things you need supply to shrink and you need demand to increase now with everything going on fundamentally with cardano i think we've got the demand side ticked um, and what we'd need to see is we need to see a lot of DeFi protocols with a lot of total value locked increasing on chain that basically then squeezes your supply. So I think these are, these numbers here are possible as we kind of think about scaling up, right? So $34 on the higher end, it's going to be the higher end. Uh, market cap's bullshit, just ignore that. Um, essentially, you've got to focus on what drives price, and that's supply and demand, right? If you've got to think about what's going to squeeze the supply and what's going to increase on the demand side of things. But if I was to be more realistic about it, there's several areas that I would really focus on, and that's going to be between these three numbers here. This is basically the 618, the 7 702 and the 786 or essentially if i was to be giving you a bit of a barrier to this uh, or barrier but a range i would say anywhere really i think is achievable number would be four dollars 84 through to about eleven dollars 54 okay that would be kind of like the area that would be reasonable in my mind okay and these are areas that essentially are going to be uh, areas that are going to struggle that the, the price action is naturally going to struggle people are going to resonate incredibly well with the um let me just actually change this to 84 take me forever otherwise um these are areas that people are going to feel concerned about okay the 786 and the 618 are going to be key areas these are areas that uh, a lot of people will find uh, you'll find people selling you'll find people buying okay depending on how how price reacts to these areas so anywhere really between four dollars 84 and 1154 that seems to make the most amount of sense to me now if i go ahead and take that from the low point that i've got it here and I put it up there, you're talking about 2,000% up to about 5,600%. Uh, so pretty good. And of course, we'll get the 17,000 if you go up higher. I still think you'll do more than this uh, because from a percentage standpoint, and it, it is subject to how low we go, the lower the price action goes in this bear market, the easier it is going to be to hit some of these numbers. Okay, so um, if we were to come down to, let's say, 15 cent, then you know you can come up here and you'll you'll be talking three thousand percent or seven thousand percent, right? And I think those kind of ranges are more acceptable. I'm not expecting seventeen thousand, but I would be kind of felt like hard done by if we didn't reach like eight to ten thousand percent in gains on Cardano, considering everything that's going on fundamentally with it. So you know I kind of want to leave this video uh, with kind of these kind of final thoughts, right? Um, they're essentially the structures that have emerged here for Cardano are incredibly good they, they give me a lot of confidence and of course cardano could even take this structure and go so much further with it right this is the minimum expectation on what's been going on with the five wave structure here because long term across multiple multiple years this could turn into a very 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 impulsive structure and that would be achieved and it sounds crazy but it would be achieved if we were to come up here towards the $800 range. Now, I don't think that's something that we're going to see, which is why I'm focusing in on this minimum expectation, okay, of a 535 zigzag, okay? So the common name is a zigzag. You can Google it if you want. It's five waves up, three waves down, five waves up. Um, so the zigzag pattern here um, could take us to $34. And, you know, I'm thinking there's a lot of places that we can stop on that journey up there. There's lots of gains to be made, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it kind of unfolds. Um, just bear in mind that we want to be conservative. We want to make sure we lock gains in. We don't just want to kind of hold out for these kind of price predictions that just never come. Um, so sell on the way up, like dollar cost averaging on the way up, and the same way that you dollar cost average on the way down, all those kind of usual things. I'm going to leave this video right there, guys. If you found it useful, smash the like button. Comment down below how useful you found it. Um, I probably opened myself up to a lot of, uh, a lot of hatred there. Um, subscribe if you're new. And don't forget to join us down in Discord, guys. 
honestly, it's the, one of the best places to be uh, in this bear market, in my humble opinion. Until the next one, have a fantastic day.